मैक्विन बस्टर है इसका एक लेग के अंदर इंजरी थी और वो जो समर के टाइम में वैसे ये विंटर माइग्रेट बर्ड्स है रास्ता बट्टा करने के बाद में वो कहीं तारों में फंस के उसका एक पैर जो इंजर्ड हो गया था We are in Pokhran in the Jaisalmer district of Rajasthan where 28 year old Radhe Sham Bishnoi has spent the last decade saving birds. To abhi 2 mahine se kafi theek hai uske usme sudhar aa raha hai aur abhi udne layak to ho gaya hai par thoda intezar karte hain barish ke baad mein jaise winter hoga baki wale birds jab is taraf migrate karenge to unhi ke sath usko release kar denge. Weighing 15 to 17 kilos, the GIB stands out as one of the heaviest flying birds in the world. Once a thriving population in these grasslands, popularly called orans or sacred groves in Rajasthan, their numbers have dwindled severely over the years. From 745 GIBs in 1978 Today there are barely 128 across Rajasthan and Gujarat a decline that leaves them classified critically endangered Habitat loss hunting and attack from wild animals had already left the species vulnerable but over the past decade something else has added to the situation overhead power lines Because of their weight and relatively poor vision, GIBs often collide with high-tension wires, typically used for renewable energy projects. The Wildlife Institute of India puts the number at 18 deaths from collisions alone every year. Mainly, पहले एक दो high-tension wire हुआ करते थे. अभी बहुत सारे तारों का जाल है जो काफी area में फैल गया है. तो पहले birds कम injured होते थे. और धीरे धीरे करके अभी ज्यादा इंजर्ड होते हैं राजस्थान इज नोन टू हैव क्लोज टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड ओरन स्ट्रेचिंग अक्रॉस मोर देन सिक्स हंड्रेड थाउजेंड हेक्टेयर ऑफ लैंड नोन फॉर देयर रिच बायोडाइवर्सिटी दीज ग्रास लैंड नर्चर आर्थ्रोपोड्स वर्म्स स्मॉल एनिमल्स एंड रेप्टाइल्स providing enough food for birds like the GIB for generations Moreover they provide critical pasture land for local communities but these vast open stretches also receive long hours of high speed wind and sunlight making them ideal for solar and wind energy projects Encroachment a big factor par ke orno mein Aman Singh, founder of Kripavis, a grassroots organization, tells us how these orans have come to become easy targets for energy companies. Many of them remain unregistered, making it easier to sell them off as wastelands. According to the 2021 estimation, 65 gigawatts of solar and wind energy projects have been planned across GIB habitats of Rajasthan and Gujarat. डेजर्ट के लिए जो बून स्पीसीस हैं कैर होता है दूसरा खेचड़ी होता है ना रोहिड़ा होता है गूगल होता है जो बहुत ही एक तरह से मेडिसिनल प्लांट्स हैं ये ज्यादातर ओरणों में इनकी प्रजेंस आज भी है ये जरूर है कि हमारे अध्ययन में इनमें कमी आई है जैसे गूगल है गूगल तेजी से घटी है दूसरा एक और स्पीसीज वहां पर सेवन घास की होती है सेवन घास पर्टिकुलरली डेजर्ट इकोलॉजी का ही घास है आपको वो दूसरी जगह नहीं मिलेगा देश में भी कहीं दूसरी जगह नहीं मिलेगा तो सेवन घास में बहुत कमी आई है और मैं ये कहूं कि जो जीआईबी ग्रेट इंडियन बस्टर्ड में कमी आने का एक मूल कारण यह भी है कि सेवन घास का कम होना Over the last few years, the fate of these birds and their habitats have made for compelling arguments in India's courtrooms. 
Following an original writ petition seeking their protection, the Supreme Court in 2021 had ordered all high-tension cables across 99,000 square kilometers of GIB habitat be laid underground. But the order was consequently reversed, leading up to another order in April 2024 that is being heralded as historic for climate justice and human rights in India. The 2024 judgment argues that the laying of high-tension cables underground could make solar power projects unviable, consequently delaying India's efforts at reducing emissions and its global commitment to climate change treaties. Instead, an expert committee has been directed to assess the feasibility of undergrounding lines and the efficacy of bird diverters for ensuring successful conservation. Acknowledging the complex dilemma of choosing one good cause over another, the Apex Court underscored the point that India's commitment to transitioning to non-fossil fuels was not merely a strategic energy goal, but a fundamental necessity for environmental preservation. Going a step further, the ruling culminated in the formulation of a new constitutional right, one that allows every citizen to be free from the adverse effects of climate change, a historic precedent in India's jurisprudence. A fundamental right ensuring protection against climate change has naturally been received profoundly across the spectrum, but the ruling in the case of GIBs versus power projects seems to have generated a new wave of questions amongst environmentalists, legislators and climate activists. Climate change affects not just humans, it affects every species of flora and fauna. No one can point out where they are not talking about or not concerned about the well-being of any species of the nature. You cannot say that I will comply with Paris but will undermine my commitment or show not show my commitment under CBD. RE is also for the betterment of the nature only, not for the betterment of one industry. Leading name in environmental litigation, Ritik Datta heads an NGO that works for communities affected by environmental harm. He explains why the 2024 judgment, an atypical green versus green scenario, has left opinions divided in the first place. Usually, environmental issues or cases have been environment versus so-called development. It, it is a mining project versus conservation project where the debates are very clear. Here, the issue is different. We have to protect the GIB, yes, it's non-negotiable, right? But on the other hand, it said, said that we need to meet our climate goals under the Paris Agreement, which means that India will have to move away from coal. We have to move to green energy, which is solar and wind and all others. And therefore, we cannot have such a large area for conservation of the GIB. Now, GIB is protected not only under the Wildlife Protection Act, it is also under the Convention on Migratory Species as well as Convention on Biological Diversity, to which India is a party. So, so how do you balance your Paris Agreement goals with your requirement under the Convention on Biological Diversity? It is a tough balancing act that the court had gotten into. However, the new climate right guaranteeing climate protection as part of the right to life and equality is being unanimously heralded as a defining moment in Indian law. Attorney Aditya Singh points out how it gives citizens much needed legal recourse to climate justice. This judgment for the first time realized that every citizen in India also has a right against the adverse impact of the environment. We had recognized right to clean environment as a fundamental right way back in 1986 in that RLEK case. But this time, first time, this weapon has come. For example, today, the citizens of Pune right, can go right uh, to the court stating that the report of the state report on climate change has actually stated that there will be about 30% rise in uh, rainfall in the next 10 years, right, in the next 7 years in Pune. Right, and therefore, there must be specific adaptation means.
In India, environmental issues are far-ranging. From clean water supply, air and waste pollution, to landslides, cyclones and floods. By emphasizing focus on vulnerable communities disproportionately affected by climate change, the judgment has additionally made provisions for much-needed corrective action. However, how much of this protection extends to communities living in urban sprawls? Those equally vulnerable to climate hazards, we ask? So anything is possible. So it just needs because climate change is a reality today. It is not something that's going to happen in the future. And for everything that is happening today, which can be attributed to climate change, people can actually go to court. In areas which are facing extreme heat, to demand that, you know, during the peak summer time when the heat is maximum, that should not be, um, you know, working at that point of time. It's something which is not just limited to uh, rising seawater. It can be people demanding that there can be effective cooling, whether in public places and all, because the temperature is going up to 45 degrees, humidity levels have gone up. So they can demand cooling as a matter of right. One of the biggest concerns following 2024 judgment is the risk of interpreting it as a free hand doled out to renewable energy companies, making greenwashing easier. Litigants like Rithik point out how renewable energy projects are still not mandated to undergo any environmental or social impact assessment in India. There are serious social and environmental concerns which arises out of renewable energy. You this, this blind approach of having renewable energy park, whether it's solar or wind, in biodiversity hotspots, in, in areas which looks barren but is actually very important from the wildlife perspective, from the avifaunal perspective, from the, uh, from the perspective of grassland species. Well, this should not be a ground on which these areas are opened up because the Supreme Court said that the solution to climate problem is renewable energy. Back in Pokhran, local shepherd Kishan Singh tells us how solar projects in the region have been slowly taking over their village commons. Pele pura kankad hamara khula tha, to kahi pichara sakte, koi rog to gati nahi. Abhi ye plant aane ke kaarne jo zameen thi, wo bhi logo log rog li nahi, aap aap moisi sara rahi hai. To zada moisi hai, kheto ke andar jaane nahi deta hai. For a country that adds a population equivalent to London every year, coal and oil have been the cornerstones of India's industrial growth. With that, India's CO2 emissions are also the third highest in the world. The country has set itself a target of net zero emissions by 2070, as well as sourcing 50% of its electricity from renewables in the next five years. So this renewable energy sector, if you go by any report, this sector is going to attract investment of trillions in the, our country. The state which we are talking about, Rajasthan and Gujarat, they are going to have at least around roughly around 60% of generation capacity. If that judgment would not have come, I don't know how and what future we are going to see about the investments. So if investment comes, the employees, the workers, everyone is going to be positively impacted. Globally, legal actions for climate justice have been on the rise consistently, with cases more than doubling since 2017. India too, through past rulings, has successfully balanced climate goals with ecological protection. With the 2024 judgment now calling for a recognition-based approach to climate justice, the imperative question is, will the courts be able to play out this delicate balance on a case-by-case -case basis, enabling transition from what has largely been an anthropocentric approach to one that is more ecocentric? So the real test will be first, how active civil society and citizens are in bringing claims how, how creative and innovative they are in putting forward the arguments and most importantly how open the courts are. The real day will happen where every single court, including the courts at the district level, recognizes the adverse impact of climate change and are willing to, to consider this 
not just as a public interest litigation but a survival interest litigation because ultimately climate change is about survival of human and non-human species. Thanks for watching Eco India. If you like the story, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to scroll.in on YouTube.